Okay, so we have another great guest here from Poland, Marcel. How are you going, mate? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Good. I'm going to call you the Marcel the Younger because we get you confused with the other Marcel in Germany. So uh, we call you. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you've, you're coming on to say that you've been to the Old Hammer uh, Poland event and to give us a bit of a breakdown on your experiences there, mate. So mm, that's please. right. I, I had the, the great pleasure uh, to attend the, the event, which was wonderful. Uh, it's really nice to see the community as a whole uh, here in Poland. And it's very, uh, very nice to see it being, becoming bigger every year because that's, that's what's, uh, what's happening. We've had much more guests than we had last year. And uh, the number that we had last year was surprising in itself. So <laughs> that's very nice. And uh, we've played a, a variety of games. Uh, I was most interested in Rogue Trader and uh, HeroQuest. I was the game master for HeroQuest while my friend uh, Michal was uh, the game master for Rogue Trader. And I think everybody had a great fun. And, but the best thing was seeing all these people together and seeing the, the work that they have been putting out for the past year. Uh, I mean, the form of uh, the miniatures that were painted by them. We had a we had a painting contest, and the the contestants really uh, set the bar very very high. Wonderful, that's great, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm really curious about um, the other events apart from the narrative event. You know what games people were playing and participating in. Um, you talked about like a painting painting contest or a painting event there. Can you give us some more details about those events there? Mm -hmm. Of course. So uh, the main event, I mean, the, the, the main game for the event uh, every year is a Hero, Hero Hammer campaign, which sadly I am not able to participate in, in it uh, yet because I don't have an, a painted army. But uh, and it's another great thing that everyone is required to bring only painted miniatures, which is a great, great rule in the song. Uh, so. But yes, that was the, the, the main thing, the Hero Hammer campaign. And I think it lasted for either for one entire day or for two days. Uh, so most of the people who came, came here for, 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 the, for the big games. Uh, and also there was some scenario prepared by one of the hosts, Titus, you've had him um, here before. Uh, it was based on the Mm, historical line of books by Citadel. Uh, it was Old West. I'm not too familiar with the line. I mean, I've, I know that there's been some, I think, ancient edition, and now I learned about the Wild West one. Uh, and so then we played Rogue Trader. Yes, it was really nice, but <laughs> it's kind of like a tradition uh, for us to play it every year, even though the, the, the rules are you know, clumsy for, for, for a skirmish game. Mm. And so the painting contest is held uh, every year and uh, well, it's really, really nice to, to see these miniatures painted on, on the level that they are brought there. Uh, because for one thing, it would be nice to see them, you know, even unpainted, there are some incredible uh, rare miniatures, such uh, such as there was, for example, the Chaos Dwarf leader on a Lamassu. It was a nice model and it was painted beautifully. Um, and so after the painting competition, we we played some Hero Quest. I managed to squeeze some painting uh, this year, and uh, I painted my set of miniatures for Hero Quest, which is nice. They are painted in a <laughs> a bit of a clumsy way, but uh, but I think it's also always more fun to play with uh, painted miniatures than with unpainted, no matter the the, the level of craftsmanship. Totally agree, mate. Yeah, we need to get some pictures of your Hero Quest uh, miniatures that you've painted, uh, and maybe it's a surprise to some people that um, your age, you're 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 quite young to be an old hammer. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm 20. So most of the miniatures are 
far older than I am, but uh, I don't know. I think the for my uh, introduction to the hobby, the beginning was the most difficult because well, uh, it, when I when I first got into Old Hammer, I didn't know many of the miniatures, so it was difficult to know what to look for, you know, and the more I got into it, the easier it was to spot a, a good deal or something. So now it's now it's all right. You know, I can't complain about the amount of miniatures I have. Yeah, nice. Though. That's wonderful. Yeah. So we, you, we've had an interview with you before, uh, maybe a year ago or something. Maybe mm -hmm. not exactly ago. after the event. Yes. Yeah. So we'll have people who, who have not listened to our interview um, in that case, I'll drop a like a, a link below. We've got the Goblin King here. He's very intrigued to look at you here, Marcel, on the, on the big screen. He's wondering what's going on here. He can't hear a thing because I've got my earplugs. I've got my earplugs in, so you can just, just see you <laughs> moving your mouth but can't hear anything. So, yeah, my son is uh, not asleep, as you can tell, and he's very curious as to what Papa's doing up here. So yeah, uh, now that's that's good that you've got because you've got your miniatures painted for Hero Quest. I sadly don't have my miniatures painted, so myself. So well done. Um, it's one of those well, things that I've never had done, even when I was eight, at like your age, at your age when I had Hero Quest, uh, I've never painted all the models. So well done for that. Well, I have to say that they are um, very pleasing. Uh, to to paint. I mean, because they don't really have a much have much detail, uh, so you can paint them quickly. And I think sometimes it's nice to you know paint something that's where there's a lot of smooth surfaces because you know it gives you, for example, on, when you've got smooth orc skin without much texture, it gives you an opportunity to maybe experiment with the skin tones a bit. And because there are so many of these hero quest models on the market, they are quite disposable, and you don't get the usual stress, you know, of of uh, painting an old hammer mini. True, yeah, and they've got. I like. I think simple is best, and I think those models are a wonderful introduction to anybody who's painting models for the very first time. Uh, that's how I started. I started with um, the hero quest models and the the free painting guide I received from the Hero Quest set through Milton Bradley, like a you know, send away a returned paid envelope or something like that. And that's how it all started for many of us, I'm sure. So um, yeah, that's wonderful, mate. Okay. Uh, now your Rogue Trader experience. Uh, what uh, Can you tell us a little bit more about what armies were fielded in that particular game? Uh, yes, it wasn't, there hasn't been much pre-planning for that i mean uh when i arrived there were already like four people around the table we, uh, up until the the last moment we didn't know how many there will be so it wasn't like a very set scenario you know we we didn't play any 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 scenario from the book uh, but playing uh, wolf's time from the uh one of the rogue trader books it was Book of Astronomicon, I think that that's something I would like to, to play, like a very sad uh, scenario. But anyway, so uh, we we played. I think there were six people around the table. Uh, not everybody had uh, retro miniatures, but it's all right. I mean, I think that you, I think you you can you can play a great game of old hammer with new new hammer model, so whatever. Uh, so the scenario was uh, that uh, there was this uh, village on the in the middle of the uh, of the map, and it was inhabited by squads who amassed a large amount of water. And because uh, it was set in the desert, the, the water was a very desirable uh, thing. So so every every other player wanted to to get it for themselves. So we had a. Uh, an incredibly painted uh, troop of harlequins. It's, you know, the, the craftsmanship that goes into painting a, a troop of harlequins is incredible, uh, I think. So that's an achievement in itself. Uh, we had a team of El like regular Eldar, uh, not harlequins. Then we also had some space marines. Uh, I had some space marines. I mean, my, my five blood angels. <laughs> so that's not much, but it was, uh, 
Well, it's surprising how, how few models you need for Rogue Trader because it's such a complicated system. Uh, everything takes so much time. So even if you bring five models to the table, it will be enough to play some terms of the game. So yes, it's, I think um, it's a nice, nice game to be played once in, in a time. I'm not sure if it's the greatest introduction game for old hammer you know because uh, because of how thick the <clears throat> the the book and the other compendiums are uh, i think for example hero quest would be a much better introduction because of how how few rules you need to to know for that but anyway it was uh, great fun <laughs> and so yeah that's for the for the rogue trader experience i think Wonderful. I would love to see the Harlequin uh, troop that that person had painted. I'm mm -hmm. sure it looks absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I haven't seen photos of that online as yet. So yeah, I'll try to to find them and pose them Ooh. because it really it really is something to, to be seen. All right, that's excellent. Yeah, to be honest, I've never played Rogue Trader uh, myself, but when I first got into the hobby, I do remember seeing the I think it was the compilation book on the shelf at my local comic store and yeah i really love the artwork and that kind of thing the and i bought ultramarines as my first sort of entry into the 40k universe and it's like i don't know if you're familiar with that maybe some of the guys down there actually have that but it's one of those small you know square base games where the inner lid had like a hit miss location mechanic with it and you throw the dice into the box it's basically space hulk but you had all marines and had like the special event cards. It's a brilliant game, actually. I wish I still, I wish I still had it. Um, but yeah, really, really good fun. But um, yeah, I'd love to give Rogue Trader a go because I, th I think there's a lot there that it, there's a lot, there's a lot in those books. There's a lot in the rules and mechanics, and it's basically the origins of where 40k really started. So I would like to experience it sometime. Well, do, it's, oh, excuse me. Now I was going to say, do do Marines. Like, do they, like, are they any different from what second edition Marines were? Like, are they, are they a lot tougher or are they, are they just, you know, just better in combat or something? Mm, well, I'm not too familiar with the rules for second edition, but what I can tell is that uh, it's, uh, well, I like Rogue Trader because it's, uh, I think, more down to earth than later editions and it's also exhibited by the uh, statistics for space marines i think they are actually less tough than they their uh, successor iterations i think they have uh, a smaller toughness they were much more like uh, you know space police than these space killing machines that they are now and i think that's that's pretty cool and it fits because they are the same height as, for example, uh, Imperial Guard. So it makes sense that they are just uh, not that, uh, you know, extreme brutes, but um, just some um, improved humans. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so I'll have to definitely get someone to give me a game of it at some point in the future. Maybe at the Old Hammer Polar event in the future, maybe. Who knows? Hopefully, yes. Yeah, that'd be great. I hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds great, man. Okay. Anything else from the event that you would want to like to share with us at all? Uh, well, I can briefly go over the the Hero Quest experience. It was uh, very cool. Uh, I mean, I think everybody around the table enjoyed it, uh, and I also enjoyed uh, introducing people to it because the the rules were, you know, they are short and understandable. And I think that's another great thing about HeroQuest that if you want, you can, uh, you know, build upon the, the simple rules. You don't have to follow all of them, but you can, you know, give some models additional wounds or additional combat dice. So that's really nice. Uh, we played, I think, two or three quests and that was uh, enough because they, they take, I don't know, 40 minutes maybe or an hour each. But it was great fun, really. And it was nice to, to try my skill at being a game, game master. Uh, so that's for HeroQuest. Uh, we've also received the, the, like the gift packages, uh, 
each of us received uh, the, the miniature from Bring Out Your Lad, which was really nice. You know, the it, it, I think it's a miniature of a rogue trader, actually. Uh, very nice, very, very kind of the of the hosts to to gift everyone with that. That's brilliant. I didn't. I, I wasn't aware that you received anything from those guys at the foundries. That's excellent. Um, nice one. All right, that sounds great, mate. So this is the second time you've ran Hero Quest for people there at the event. Is that correct? Mm -hmm, that's correct. Yes, but I have to admit that the second time was by far a better one because I had painted miniatures. I actually read the rules carefully, so that, was, <laughs> that always helps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're fun. doing my trick, mate. You're doing my trick, not reading the rules before the game. Okay, that's good. Just going, just going with the flow of things. Uh, that's excellent. Okay, nice. And uh, yeah, we've we've actually had some remote games together. Like last time, you joined us for a game of Hero Quest with myself, uh, Marcel the Older, and uh, a couple other guys, um, Timothy from Canada and all that. So we play remotely uh, through our Discord channel. We do that, that once a month, have a get together, and uh, Marcel hosts uh, a Hero Quest adventure. And yeah, it's been really great going back to revisiting all those glory days, I think. It's, it's one of the best board games they've ever made. Uh, and I'm all, I'm also trying to get Marcel to um, run a um, a game of uh, Space Crusade because I never got to play it. It's called I think it's called Star Quest or something in in the German version. But um, yeah, that's that's a great. That's probably the, your next quest, mate. Getting Star Quest or getting the uh, Space Crusade set and painting that up and and hosting that up at the uh, Old Hammer Poland event at some point. Uh, well, for my next next thing, I'm. I'm not sure. I mean, I would like to get a, you know, like a concise uh, Rogue Trader Warband because uh, maybe these five Marines aren't sufficient anymore. I would like to get some Space Orcs painted. Mm, I've collected about 10 of them, so that would be enough. And I, I'm, I was lucky enough to get uh, the Rogue Trader Eras Quicks. I don't know if you, if you are familiar with these, but they are... Mm, they don't. They aren't familiar, similar to the squeeze we are familiar with now. They are in these round balls of of redness. They are uh, in different shapes because in I think in in the original rock tree lore, uh, squeaks were um, somehow connected to tyranids, and they were some sort of uh, an experiment gone wrong. So they have some really interesting models. So I think that would be this, but I'm also, uh, since I don't have you know much time during the week, I would like to paint something that would be relaxing. And I found the, the joy of uh, other miniature manufacturers, you know, that which clearly have the old hammer feel, but um, aren't Citadel. I don't know if you're familiar with Essex miniatures, maybe? Okay, uh, you're muted. So, uh... ah, sorry. Yes, I. <laughs> yes, it's uh, yes. I have heard of those. Sorry, I've heard of six miniatures. Yes. Uh, so I bought just some some nice from them. I think uh, they are nice because they are fam similar to the to the pre slot uh, uh, citadel models. And that's another cool thing. I think when you're when you don't have much time when miniatures come in one piece you know you don't even have to glue a shield just stick them on a on a base and you're 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 good yeah mate well i think with old hammer now just go with what you got you know if you find a range that you really like and it's going to be suitable for what your project is i think it's fine but we talked a little bit about 3d printing before we started recording today and yeah i mean it's becoming more and more prevalent nowadays i think with people who have access to a 3D printer or can get 3D printing services. Uh, the files out there now is really just mind blowing, like the scanning uh, ability to scan sprues or models completely and then have them printed out uh, is just uh, you know, a wonderful service, I think. Because um, I said before that, you know, I've got a guy in Australia helping me out with some backpacks. I don't have any backpacks for my Marines. So, They've got files now that have, they've got the scans and, and files for that now that you can print out your backpacks, your bolters, your close combat weapons, you know, everything. So 
Uh, the sky's the limit, I think, now for that kind of thing. Um, and if you really wanted to, you could print out an entire entire army, I think, in the near future. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how things develop with the old hammer. Um, like I say, whether people would want to get the old models or whether they want a new 3D printed model uh, based, on the, based on the scan of a, an old model kind of thing. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see where it goes. Um, yeah. Anyhow, Marcel, it's been really good to talk to you. I've really enjoyed our chat together to um, to get back to uh, after about a, a year or so, about eight months or something. I think the last time we we chatted. But um, thank you very much for sharing your experiences with the uh, Old Hammer Poland event. I'm sorry the the, 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 the the Snotling King is still awake. I've got to go downstairs and get him bathed and into bed soon. So uh, sorry to end our interview a little bit shorter than planned. But um, mate, take right. care of yourself, and I'm sure we're going to hear hear from you again in the near future. Thank you. So all the best to you, and I wish you a good night. Thanks <laughs> very much again. Hear from us soon, I hope. Definitely, mate. Goodbye. Take care, mate. Okay, bye bye. Take care. Bye.